Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here today, especially after that fun round. I went, I lost first, so sorry. Um, so I'm here to talk to you today about how science can help make the world a better place and how you can do well by doing good. So this was me in high school when I was around your age. <laughs> yep, let's get it all out. Um, I definitely thought I was uh, cool, um, crazy hair. Uh, but when I was in uh, high school, I faced a lot of hurdles. So there were the traditional hurdles uh, through the curriculum, having to do the standard courses, math, science. And these courses were very siloed. There, you would go to one class, and then go to the next, and there wasn't any connection. In addition to this, though, I had some other challenging hurdles. I was severely bullied in high school and made to feel completely worthless. It got really dark, really bad. But in addition to this, I actually had some challenges with teachers. I had teachers say to me, you will never go to university because you're not good enough at science, just give up. And I, was, I thought, if I didn't go to university, I wouldn't be successful. Basically, I had teachers telling me I wouldn't be successful. But I did go to university, and I went to the University of Guelph because I wanted to be a banker. I thought if I went into banking, I would be able to have a lucrative life and prove those bullies wrong. And I can say in my first year of university, I was miserable, and I wanted to drop out because I didn't have any passion for what I was doing. But then I took a chance, and I took a field course that brought me to Botswana in southern Africa to spend time amongst the sand in the Kalahari. Now, it was my first time leaving North America, going to southern Africa, and it was a remarkable experience. I got to meet and see some cool things, but it was also my first time experiencing abject poverty and seeing it up close. And when I came back from this trip, I realized I was on such a selfish trajectory to prove someone wrong who I would probably never see again. So when I came back to university, I made a pledge to try and make a difference in the world and do things differently. And so I went from that guy with the stupid hair to this. <laughs> so today, I'm the founder of a global company, which we'll talk about in a bit. The company is based on science, but built on values. We're one of the top performing social enterprises globally, and we've helped improve the lives of almost 750,000 people around the planet. So, what does the world look like 50 years from now? Well, this is how I'm going to look, or at least how I'm going to feel. Um, because, but that's why you need to be the ones to make a difference. The world is plagued with some very serious, wicked problems. And we need to find solutions rooted in science, but also throughout interdisciplinary thinking, to find sustainable solutions to help make the world survive. So why am I telling you this? Why is this important to you? And how can you do something? Well, to answer that, I want to show you an iceberg. The iceberg, for me, is a great representation of world hunger. About one billion people around the planet suffer from hunger. And I think that's the tip of the iceberg, because greater than that, about four billion people suffer from hidden hunger, which is mainly malnutrition. So the top part of the iceberg are those who are hungry, but the deeper part you don't see are those who are malnourished. And the largest malnourishment problem that the world faces is iron deficiency anemia, which impacts two billion people, or one third of the world's population. So what is iron and why is it important? Oops. Well, when you think about iron, you probably think about this guy. Um, but iron is not just from a superhero. Iron is actually one of the most vital nutrients that your body can have. Iron creates hemoglobin, which is critical in red blood cells, which carry oxygen around your body. Iron gives you energy, it helps your brain develop, your organs develop, and without iron, you would die. We have the ability to have iron into our diets and have a solution to combat iron deficiency naturally. However, if you're living in poverty, it's very difficult to afford food that's well balanced and has uh, nutrients. And iron supplements, which is a pharmaceutical approach, are very expensive and have some very nasty side effects. So people don't like taking iron supplements. 
In fact, iron deficiency rates have gone up by about 10% since the year 2000, and spending has gone up by 30%. So we are spending billions of dollars on a problem that's simply getting worse. We need a simple solution to combat this massive global problem, and that's why we need the lucky iron fish. So lucky iron fish is small, it fits in the palm of my hand, but this little thing is having a profound impact around the planet. So how does it work? Well, simply, you simply boil the lucky iron fish in one liter of water. If you're cooking water, soup, curry, or any liquid-based meal, just boiling it for 10 minutes can provide a family with their daily required iron intake. We like to say that the lucky iron fish is about equivalent of eating a chicken breast every day. It adds a small amount of healthy iron in a natural and simple way. So why is it shaped like a fish? Well, when we started the project, I was actually living in Cambodia, and we were using iron discs. And though we found that those were scientifically effective, the women we were talking to laughed us out of their households. They said, that looks like garbage. I'm not going to put trash into my food. Get out of here, you crazy Canadian. <laughs> but we did some research, and we discovered that in Cambodia, the symbol of a fish is a symbol of luck and prosperity. So we shaped the disc like a fish, and suddenly everybody wanted to cook with it because they thought it would make them lucky. And then when they felt healthier, they thought that was the luck of the fish helping them. Cooking with the lucky iron fish does not change the taste, color, or smell of the liquid it's cooked in. Our clinical trials have shown there are no negative side effects, and it's reusable by the whole family for up to five years. So it is way cheaper than taking those iron supplement pills, and it doesn't have any of the negative side effects. In fact, iron supplements have a compliance rate of about 30%, whereas the lucky iron fish has a compliance rate of over 90%. So it's a cheaper and more effective solution. But you can have a great idea, but it will be useless unless you can make it sustainable. And I believe the sustainability in the Lucky Iron Fish is our business model. Lucky Iron Fish, as I mentioned before, is a social enterprise. So we are committed to doing good in everything that we do. For a sales model, the Lucky Iron Fish has a buy one, give one program. If you buy a Lucky Iron Fish, for yourself or for a friend or family member on our website at luckyironfish.com. We will commit to donate one to a family in need for free around the world. To date, we have sold over 100,000 units, which is how we have seen our profound impact globally. And that number is growing. And by the year 2020, we've made a pledge to sell 1 million units to help 1 million families around the world. What's actually interesting is I just got back from India, and the symbol of a fish works everywhere. We've scaled up to over 25 countries, and we've seen the fish has some sort of prominence. Except in India, nobody wanted to use it because it's a very vegetarian population. And so people didn't want to put a fish, even a fake fish, into their cooking pot. So we've actually just developed the lucky iron leaf, which is the vegetarian version for the lucky iron fish. <laughs> So soon you'll be able to have a fish or a veg option when you're buying our product. <laughs> but we are not, it's not just the product that's helping improve lives, it's the business model. We're committed to uh, reducing our environmental footprint, promoting transparency, equality, and diversity in our hiring practices. We're a B Corp certified company, which is a benefit corporation. Ben & Jerry's is one of the more famous B Corps, but we have a higher score, um, I think. Um, and B Corp actually does rankings of all of their uh, members. And Lucky Iron Fish ranks within the top 10% of all B Corps internationally. So we're actually living up to our mission of doing well and doing, by doing good. So as I mentioned before, the world faces these tremendous global challenges. And we need to find solutions to make the world a better place. And that's where I'm imploring you to help make a difference. I hope today's talks inspired you to want to go back and make change. I hope you think about how your education can help improve the lives of millions or billions of people across the planet. And you can take STEM, oops, you can take STEM to help make the world a better place. Thank you so much. <laughs>